What the fuck is up, y'all? It is your man, Julian, aka The Cozy Representative. I am back again today, a uh, different kind of video. I'm trying something a little bit new, a little bit different. Uh, I'm doing an album review today, which I'm I'm actually really excited about. And this is just kind of me testing the waters. I think I'm planning on doing more of these, but, you know, depending on how this video goes, this could go okay, or this could be, like, the worst YouTube video you've ever seen in your life. I don't know. We're gonna try it out. That's what life all, that's what life is, right? An experiment, trying things. To s throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks, if you will. So anyway, <laughs> um, the album that I am going to be talking about today uh, is uh, a new album by a band that I made a video about a few months ago talking about their early career and their early history. Um, and they put out a new album this past April, I believe, uh, called Wake Up Sunshine. The band is All Time Low. Um, and I have a lot of thoughts and opinions on this album. I'm also going to be talking a little bit about the album that came before it, which was Last Young Renegade, um, and how that album kind of transitioned into this new one, because I think it's important for, like, the context of their career and the new album and whatnot. Um, so I'm going to be talking a little about, bit about that. I'm going to be talking about the new album. And, yeah, um, I... Th it's going to be a lot more, like, chill and low-key than my normal kind of videos uh, for these album reviews, I think. That's what I'm going to try <laughs> in this one. Um, so, anyways, was, blah, blah, without further ado... Oh, I just wanted to say one thing. There's a couple flies buzzing around my room. I don't know how many. Maybe two, maybe three. I keep trying to get them out of my room. Like, they're, like, trying to get out, obviously. They're, like, you know, fucking chilling on my windows and, like, you know, they don't want to be in here and I don't want them here either and i keep opening the door and being like yo guys get the get out i'm trying to help you and they just keep buzzing around you know they're not i'm like i'm trying to help you there, there's your safety the kitchen window's open i can't open this window because i got my ac going and i just i don't want other bugs to come in so i'm just like they, they, i'm trying to help you all go out here and they're just not doing it um, so at this point I just kind of gave up and I'm just like, y'all can fucking figure it out on your own. <laughs> so if you see some flies buzzing around, um, you know, sorry, I'm, I'm dealing with it. So we're all going to have to deal with it today. Anyways, without further ado, uh, here is my review of the brand new all time low record, wake up sunshine. Let's go. All right. So like I said, uh, and this might be somewhat of a hot take, within the all-time low fan base, if you will, uh, but I'm a person who actually really enjoys uh, their last record, 2017's Last Young Renegade. Uh, I think it was great to hear them explore different sounds and styles and, you know, new musical textures, uh, just just different ideas and different musical avenues that we haven't seen all-time low go down ever um, before in their career. I think they pulled it off super well, uh, and especially at, at the point that they were at in their career at that time in 2017, they were following up two very great, yet at the same time, kind of middle-of-the-road records, which were Don't Panic and Future Hearts. Like I said, great records, but they were very, like, not like standard albums in the sense that they were boring, but they were very, like, these are all-time low records. These sound like all-time low. In my opinion, at that point, they were due for an album where they flipped the script a little bit and switched up the style, experimented with some new stuff. After all, you know, uh... No one wants a band to just do, like, the same record over and over again. I mean, not saying All Time Low were doing that, but it's 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 cool to hear a band switch it up every now and again, and that's what they did on Last Young Renegade. I think the songs on that record, Last Young Renegade, have a lot of emotional depth, and, you know, they're a lot darker than All Time Low's previous material, and also a lot more, like, laid back and slower, more, more mid-tempo, super different from the sunshiny you know, big electric guitar, pop punk type stuff than, than we're used to from All Time Low. And like I said, I think they pulled off this vibe very well. I think they, they did a good job on that record. However, um, <laughs> like I was kind of getting at earlier, uh, this record was met with a lot of backlash by fans, and it, and it still is uh, not a totally loved record by the All Time Low fan base, um, which isn't super surprising considering that kind of harkens back to the release of their third record, Dirty Work back in 2011. Um, that was the first time in their career that they really tried to change up their style a bit and make a record that was, you know, perhaps an attempt to be more appealing to a, a broader audience, a more accessible album, if you will. After all, 
Dirty Work was the one record they made that was released through a major label, so that's kind of to be expected. Um, they were met at the time with serious backlash from fans claiming the band had changed and were sellouts. Uh, you know, people were really pissed about that record for some reason, causing the band to basically <laughs> run with their tail between their legs back to Hopeless Records and release Don't Panic, which was a very return-to-form pop-punk record only a year later. However, much like Weezer's Pinkerton record, the opinion amongst fans has completely swapped completely flipped regarding Dirty Work. People nowadays love that album uh, and kind of consider that the classic all-time low sound now and urge all-time low to go back to their sound on Dirty Work, which is interesting. So it is possible that the reason why the two records following Dirty Work, Don't Panic and Future Hearts, were, albeit great records, very, like I said, down the middle and, you know, true to the classic or the more uh, predictable sound, or the more familiar sound, rather, that we know from All Time Low. Sure, on Future Hearts, they got a little bit less overtly pop-punk uh, than they were on Don't Panic, experimenting with some more anthemic, alternative rock type stuff, but it was still very undeniably All Time Low. So Last Young Renegade is the only record in All Time Low's discography that doesn't really sound like All Time Low all that much. <laughs> they really went out on a limb with this record and made something that really stands out. Um, it's sort of like the black sheep type record in their discography. Um, it's kind of like what Mayday Parade did with their 2015 record Black Lines. Last Young Renegade really isn't a record that was like tailor-made for the hardcore OG all-time low fans. It's simply a record that, you know, in my opinion, the band wanted to do because hey, they had been, you know, honing in on one really similar sound record after record for years. And as musicians, as creative people, you know, me being a musician myself, I can just tell that they wanted to flip the script for a change and exercise different creative muscles, explore different songwriting techniques, uh, experiment with different soundscapes and textures than they were used to with All Time Low. Because, you know, being a creative person, as I'm sure like most of you are too, you know, sometimes the most fun and creatively fulfilling thing you can do is to experiment with different styles because it scratches different creative itches that you have uh, and keeps your passion, which is music, fun and exciting still. I think that as a fan of the band or a follower of All Time Low, whether you love or hate Last Young Renegade, whether it's your cup of tea or not, I think the least you could do is just respect and appreciate the fact that the band wanted to try something completely different and new, um, whether or not it lives up to your expectations. I mean, I know it's, it's difficult when a band that you love puts out a record that you're not super into, but music in general is just completely subjective and not everything is going to scratch everybody's itch. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, still, while it does have its fans, one of them being me, <laughs> um, Last Young Renegade, like I've said, was not well received by a lot of the fan base, which honestly, All Time Low probably even expected. Like I said, it sounds different than anything they had done before, and it has also been criticized by fans for having more of a uh, contemporary top 40 radio pop type sound, like some generic music that would be playing when you like get into an Uber or something. I totally get that it kind of has that vibe about it. Uh, my counter argument to that is that I think All Time Low actually pulled off a more radio-friendly sound uh, quite well on this album and made some genuinely really great songs. That being said, I'm not the type of guy to, to bash like radio-friendly music. I, I, personally, I love a good cheesy pop tune. <laughs> so at the end of the day, um, just like with any music and art, just like I said, it's all subjective. Everyone has their own tastes. Regardless, once 2020 had rolled around, it had been three years since the, the, the last time All Time Low had released a new album. Uh, and all things considered, 2017's Last Young Renegade was not super well received. Received. Um, Alex Gaskarth had spent most of 2019 working on his new band alongside Blink-182's Mark Hoppus, which is crazy, uh, which was a band called Simple Creatures, uh, while Jack Barracat was working on his new project called Who Hurt You. Uh, Ryan Dawson was recording bands in Nashville, and Zach Merrick was like doing handstands and lifting monster truck tires out in Hawaii. <laughs> Uh, the future for All Time Low seemed a little bit questionable for a minute there. Um, if they wanted to reignite the interests of their fans and come back with the splash, they needed to really do something crazy and splash hard, you know what I'm saying? In comes Wake Up Sunshine. <laughs> uh, their second release through the classic emo pop record label Fueled by Ramen, Wake Up Sunshine was, from the jump, uh, labeled as and referred to as by the band as somewhat of a return to form type album, uh, or at least 
least that was kind of implied within the whole marketing campaign behind the record, the the interviews the band was doing. They were kind of referring to it as a record that would be more true to their their classic sound or the the OG all time low vibe, sort of the opposite of what they did on Last Young Renegade, so to speak. And as the first singles from the album started to drop, which were some of the poppiest tracks on the whole album, uh, like some kind of disaster or getaway green which were some of the poppiest songs on the whole album and some of the poppiest songs and most pop punk influenced songs that all time low have dropped in years you know uh people were under the assumption that the record was you know not only going to be a return to form but a straight up return to the band's old sound like they had done on classic records like so wrong it's right and nothing personal after all right before the release of wake up sunshine the band had just finished celebrating the 10 year anniversary of the release of nothing personal where they actually re-recorded the whole album and did like a retrospective documentary about the making of the album uh which was very very cool. With this whole nothing personal celebration fresh in everybody's heads and the fact that the first couple singles released from the album did have some very nothing personal era all-time low-esque energy to them, people were expecting that all-time low were going to quote unquote right the wrongs <laughs> they had made on Last Young Renegade uh, and officially return to their old classic tried and true all-time low sound. Now, is this actually the case on their new record Wake Up Sunshine? Mm, not really. Uh, kind of? Kind of, sort of, but not really. Let me explain further. You see, despite whatever the perception of this record was going into it, I would say all in all, Wake Up Sunshine is way more of a cohesive collection of all of the different sounds and styles All Time Low have experimented with over the course of their whole career, as opposed to just simply a return to their classic sound. While there definitely are elements of their classic sound that do make a return on this record that we haven't really heard from the band since since maybe 2012's Don't Panic album, uh, specifically on the first half of the record, there are also elements of the sound they had on Dirty Work, elements of Future Hearts, and on the second half of the record, a whole heaping uh, of more elements of the sounds and styles they had played around with on Last Young Renegade. So to simply call this album a return to their classic sound, I don't really think is true, but I do think it is, like I said, a a cohesive collection, you know, of, uh, of, of everything that we ha have come to know uh, and, and have heard from All Time Low, you know what I'm saying? I think initially uh, this threw a lot of fans for a loop when this album was first made available uh, and people first heard it. I think people were kind of caught off guard by this record as a whole because a lot of people really were honestly expecting this record to kind of be Nothing Personal Part 2. To be honest, I was kind of expecting that too, weirdly enough. However, what we actually ended up getting on Wake Up Sunshine is, in my opinion, a hell of a lot better than just a remake of a, a record that the band had already done. Um, it's also, if you ask me, a way smarter decision from the band to make a more all-encompassing record that also pushes new boundaries uh, instead of just simply pandering to their old fans and making a record that everyone has already heard before. Well, yes, a nothing personal sequel might sound like a really sweet idea on paper, in practice, I don't think it would be, you know, nearly as exciting or as captivating as uh, you might think it would be. I mean, I won't name any names, but if you look at other bands in the scene who are known for just making the same record over and over again, uh, you know, that's like probably the most boring career trajectory you could possibly take. It's not interesting. It never actually works. Um, no one wants to hear the same record with the same style over and over and over again, because just like with most classic records by classic bands that you love so much, really, if you get down to it, you don't r actually want to hear another Nothing Personal. You don't really want to hear another From Under the Cork Tree. You don't really want to hear another uh, Tell All Your Friends. You, what you really want is to just go back to how you felt in your life when you heard those records and those songs for the first time again. You know what I'm saying? The age you were, the who your friends were, where you lived, the nostalgia of it all. If anything, it's the nostalgia about those records that people might even love more than the, the, the records themselves. And really, at the end of the day, people just want to hear good music. The problem is, like I was mentioning earlier, everyone's definition of what good music is and isn't is totally different, which is why I love Last Young Renegade and why 
so many other people think it's like the worst piece of shit <laughs> that All Time Low have ever released. Now, with all this said, I really like Wake Up Sunshine, uh, and I think it's it's really good and really cool what All Time Low did with Wake Up Sunshine. I think it was a necessary move to make in their career, and I think it was the right time for it, uh, making an album that has a little bit of everything, a little bit of all the sounds and the styles that they're known for and that they have done in their career, uh, summed up into one cohesive package. Um, when you listen to it all the way through, it kind of sounds like you're listening to an all-time low greatest hits collection or something like that. Now, before I get into what I love about this record, which I love a lot of things about this record, I want to first go over a couple problems that I have with it, because after all, this is an album review, um, this is not an all-time low puff piece, <laughs> and there are a couple things uh, that, you know, I think are kind of uh, negative, eh, maybe not like negative, but just, just a couple problems that I have with it that keep me from like fully loving it all the way. Let me get into those things. So the first thing is I do think this record is a little bit too long. Um, I think that in the second half of the track list, uh, specifically right around the middle, uh, the record starts to lose me a little bit sometimes when I try to listen to the whole thing. Um, there are a lot of slower, more low key mid tempo tracks that are on the second half of the album that start to get a little bit, they're beautiful songs, I want to say, but having like so many mid-tempo ballad type songs one after another um it starts to get a little bit monotonous and tired and i think a couple of these tracks probably could have been omitted from the record which might make the album drag a little bit less when you try to listen to the whole thing um i think this album might have been better as a solid 13 track album as opposed to 15 maybe which leads me into my next qualm about this record i think the order in which the songs appear on the album the sequence uh could could have been a little different it could have been a little uh, more diversified from song to song uh, like the way the track list is set up the first half of the album specifically tracks one through seven uh, are all the most poppy pop punky energetic songs and the rest of the track list after that is mostly like i said softer quieter more mid-tempo songs or just more experimental songs in general this is one reason why the album kind of at times loses me at a certain point uh is because the album is a, just a little bit like top heavy in the sense that it it hits you with with all the energy right up front in the first half and then the second half is a little just a whole different mood basically i th i i think if the track listing was more similar to for example um the track list on mayday parade's 2018 album sunnyland uh where it's the same thing half of that album is super energetic and rocking while the other half is you know mostly ballads or softer tracks but the album doesn't lose your interest uh at any point because it's it's sequenced to be like soft song then upbeat song then soft song then rock song you know what i mean it's a little bit more diverse diversified and kind of holds your interest throughout the whole the whole time and, and kind of makes the uh the more rockin songs stand out a little bit more and the same thing the the softer songs also stand out a little bit more too because there's kind of that juxtaposition throughout the whole listening experience you know what i mean i think if all time low had diversified the sequence of the sequence of the track list a little bit more on Wake Up Sunshine uh, so that it flows through an even mix of uh, energetic songs and softer songs one after another, I think it would have been more interesting to listen to uh, rather than one big chunk of energetic songs at the start and then into one big chunk of softer songs. You know what I'm saying? Because you're kind of either in the mood for one or the other. You're, you're not going to listen to the whole thing. I think it would be, you know, you it would make just more sense if there was, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of just, that's kind of just something that I've run into with this record. It's kind of hard to get through the whole thing. And I think it could have been a little shorter and sequence could have been a little bit more diversified. But that being said, um, let me get into what I love about this record, which is a lot of things. <laughs> So like I had hinted at earlier, uh, tracks one through seven are all probably my favorite songs on this album and probably the most stand out, the most noteworthy. Um, these songs are all upbeat and sunshiny. Um, they all kind of sound like a matured and updated version of like really specifically the sound that they had on Nothing Personal. Um, the band really hadn't had, you know, hasn't displayed or brought to the table some real Nothing Personal energy since 2012's Don't Panic. Uh, and it's really great to hear more of that you know sunshiny driving in the summertime with the windows down vibes that all time low are known for and that their classic music really embodies but with an updated spin on them making them feel 
making this sound and the style feel appropriate to exist in the year 2020 uh, and feel appropriate to have been made by an all-time low who are all around the age of 30 now. <laughs> um, they hearken back to their old material, but not in a way that feels tacky or outdated or out of place. Uh, and all at the same time, these songs somehow manage to also explore new musical territory as well. So the more classic sounding songs are definitely the opening track, Some Kind of Disaster, uh, Getaway Green, as well as Melancholy Kaleidoscope. Everything about Getaway Green and Melancholy Kaleidoscope, wow, that is a mouthful, Melancholy Kaleidoscope, uh, sound like they could have easily been B-sides from the Nothing Personal album, if you ask me. These songs are straight up classic all-time low vibes with amazing chorus melodies, uh, definitely standout tracks from the album. Some Kind of Disaster explores that classic all-time low feel while also exploring new musical territory, specifically in the verses, which sound very, you know, contemporary pop vibe uh, with more influence from modern pop music or, or, or even bands like Five Seconds of Summer kind of thing, uh, especially in Alex's vocal inflections. Um, now, that's interesting because Five Seconds of Summer are obviously a band that are very inspired by all all time low and wouldn't exist without all time low so it's interesting to hear these bands kind of come out of the woodwork uh inspired by an older band and then the older band gets inspired by the newer band and it's kind of cool to hear music kind of evolve like that i don't know um <laughs> sleeping in which is uh probably my second favorite track on the album i'll get into my first favorite track in a second uh, <laughs> uh and definitely one of the best and most interesting songs all time low has released in quite some time sleeping in that is um is a great song that much like some kind of disaster combines classic all-time low vibes uh, with more contemporary pop rock influences. The band absolutely knock it out of the park on this song. I think it's one of the best songs all-time low has put out in quite some time. Trouble Is mixes Alex Gaskarth's genius pop punk vocal melodies with a bunch of really odd time signatures which as far as I know is brand new territory for all-time low. Um, so it's really cool to hear the band you know experiment with this style of doing odd time signatures mixing it with their classic pop punk influence i think the band i was kind of iffy about the song at first honestly but the the more i got into it and the more it sunk in i think the band really pulled this off with ease which is really cool the title track wake up sunshine is a sunny uplifting pop punk track that reminds me a lot of green day uh if you told me that this song was like all time low covering some random green day b-side i would probably believe you <laughs> uh, my number one favorite song on this album is definitely the track Monsters, which is a single. The chorus on the song is insane. It makes me rock the fuck out. <laughs> I would kind of describe this song as if, you know, it's like if one of the darker, more moodier songs on Last Young Renegade had a baby uh, with one of the more anthemic alt-rock songs on Future Hearts. Uh, and then if you threw in a rap verse from Black Bear on it, you'd get Monsters. <laughs> uh, this is definitely like my new favorite favorite all-time low song and I find myself going back to this one a lot more than I go back to a lot of the other songs on this album that chorus just fucking hits you right in the gut it's awesome you know what I mean so the track pretty venom which is the interlude on this album marks a shift in the in the album in the track list uh, where we switch over from you know all of these super upbeat pop punky classic all-time low styled songs which start out the first chunk of the album into the second half which is full of softer more mid-tempo emotional alt-rock songs uh some very beautiful songs toward the latter half of this album I, I i might add like i said this is the part of the album where sometimes it starts to lose me just a little bit uh despite how beautiful you know these more mid-tempo songs are and i'll get into that in a second um sometimes uh, just the the track list of the album starts to, it starts to drag and starts to fall a little flat for me, um, not even because of the songs themselves, uh, but because, in my opinion, it's just too many slow mid-tempo ballad type songs all in a row uh one right after another seriously there's like six or seven soft songs all in a row um if i'm not particularly in the mood for slower emotional ballad type songs uh you know I i'm not really gonna stick around for the second half of this album you know what i mean and maybe some of these songs would actually kind of hit better and stand out a bit more and 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 hit harder uh emotionally if they were you know more integrated in with the up beat songs a little bit more if the track list was more diverse in its sequencing possibly i don't know maybe i'm maybe i'm like totally wrong but this is <laughs> this is just the one thing that i keep thinking about with this album i'm not 
totally loving how it's like split up into two halves like just kind of wish it was more integrated but anyway that being said <laughs> despite my problems with the track listing let's get into the actual songs and the the content of the music on the second half of the album uh because here honestly we continue to watch all time low as they deliver some of the best music they've made in years and some of the most beautiful tracks they've honestly ever released as a band so to start i do love the interlude pretty venom uh it's a very dark, low-key song with some really great vocal melodies. I feel like for literally every song on this album, I could and am uh, complimenting the vocal melodies. Uh, for real, the chorus melodies and vocal melodies in general on this entire album are really all amazing and stand out. Uh, whether it's an upbeat song or a slower song, Alex Gaskarth is really turning into like a, a mini Rivers Cuomo uh, as far as his just sheer ability to write amazing vocal melodies and also be prolific about about it and that is displayed on the song pretty venom uh, as well as the, 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 the as well as the next track favorite place this song finds all-time low experimenting with a more contemporary pop rock sound there's even a tiny bit of maybe an alt country vibe on this one uh, this song is definitely similar to the stuff that they were doing on last young renegade with its emotional depth uh, and more low-key driving around at night with the windows rolled up kind of vibe <laughs> uh, which is a sound and style I think that they pull off quite quite well despite all the haters <laughs> or whatever the next track safe definitely has a standout chorus uh stand out within the context of the second half of the album that is great chorus on this one and just a great vibe altogether i do love this song but honestly it's pretty similar in vibe to the song that came before it favorite place um and while i do love both of these songs this is an example of where kind of what I'm talking about, where the sequence of the second half of the album starts to lose me a little bit. Having these songs that are all, you know, mid-tempo, emo, alt-rock type jams that are all pretty similar in vibe to one another, one after another. Um, these are very beautiful songs for what they are, but they do start to blend together a little bit. And like I said, if I'm not really in the mood for more mid-tempo, sadder songs, the album starts to drag a little bit at this point. That being said, though, I absolutely love the song January Gloom. Holy shit. Beautiful fucking track. Uh, there's some nice, like, upbeat swagger in the verses before it morphs into a very heartfelt and passionate chorus. Uh, this song is perfect for a sad day when you're just fucking feeling over it all you know what i mean i love the vibe of this song definitely one of my favorites uh on this album probably i'll say and it goes perfectly with its counterpart its sequel song summer days which is uh, another fun upbeat song uh i really like summer days some beautiful melodies on this one more beautiful melodies from alex gaskarth and it really does have a nostalgic like remembering summer's past or like melancholy end of summer kind of retrospective somber vibe kind of reminds me a little bit of something off of Dirty Work on this song, but also some new musical territory is explored as well, uh, specifically in the vocals of the verses of the song. Clumsy is another song that brings some Dirty Work vibes to the table, which is awesome. Uh, it also maybe sounds a little bit like, I don't know, White Noise era Paris. This song to me, it kind of sounds like if you said like, hey, what if White Noise era Paris covered a Dirty Work era all-time low song in their style? that's what you'd get this song clumsy <laughs> um i love this song this one's a fun one with a very classic all-time low sounding chorus glitter and crimson is an absolutely gorgeous acoustic bass track with some really nice descriptive lyrics and then basement noise is a nice emotional closing track that really ties this whole album together um with some retrospective lyrics talking about the you know the band themselves kind of like a song about the career <laughs> of all time low and hearkening back to the old days a little bit um this song specifically the chorus is definitely a bit of a tearjerker so anyways to wrap this up i'd probably give this album a solid eight out of ten uh despite my one real qualm with it which is obviously like i've said the track listing and the sequencing of this album if i were alex gaskarth i probably would have you know maybe cut out two of the more slower more mid-tempo songs making this maybe a 13 track album and i probably would have made the track list a little bit more diverse from 
track to track to track, as I've already stated. Um, but despite this, that's just a minor little thing. That doesn't really affect the songs themselves, you know what I mean? Um, so that being said, I really do think All Time Low made a great record with Wake Up Sunshine and honestly released some of the best, most powerful, most standout songs they've written in years. Uh, I think some of the songs on this album are some of the best songs they've ever written, period. I commend All Time Low for still sounding so fresh and new and exciting after like a bajillion fucking years of being a band uh, while still trying to push the envelope and do different fun, new and exciting things with their music while still retaining those core qualities that made All Time Low, that made classic All Time Low so great in the first place. Good for you, All Time Low. I'm gonna give you a clap. Let's all clap for the boys on All Time Low. Um, all things considered, uh, I think this is a standout record in the discography of All Time Low and even though I would have went with a different track list, the songs on this record absolutely rip. Like I said, 8 out of 10. This has been The Cozy Representative. Uh, thank you for watching my first album review. Let me know if this video was good or if it was shit or if I should keep doing this. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I hope you all have a great day. Have a great morning. Have a great night. And uh, yeah, thank you all so much. Peace.